What would I say to Brigham Young, Wilfred Woodruff, and the other presidents on up to President Thomas S. Monson? I'm going to meet him soon. Travis Wayne Goodsell. Our opening hymn is by Evelyn Champagne King Shame. Closing hymn by Shine Down. What a shame. I can't make this long, though I fear it will be. I've got too much to do this morning. You don't see it until this afternoon. The well, majority of you find my videos through Google search or through a YouTube search. YouTube won't allow you to have it recommended. And very few of you go to my channel to see what's new. I used to have. 3,000 views a day when I'm on my website. <clears throat> I used to be over 20,000 on uh, YouTube per month, 28 days. 20, 30,000. So you can see how destroyed I've become. People want me silenced. And with all that's going on in the news, now you see why they wanted me silenced. Because this is all that I've learned for four years now. still debating on the title, if it should be Mormons Betray the Faith, Shamed Worldwide, Joseph Smith Prophesied Coronavirus, Mormons Deny, Shamed Worldwide. Thus the hymns. The Associated Press is the latest come out and shame the Mormons. Being Mormon is not just in the name. I'm Mormon because my baptismal thing made me Mormon. My baptism made me Mormon. It's not just having the name and being a member. Being Mormon is following the tenets of Mormonism. If you're bickering and arguing because you're concerned Jesus is mad at you because you say Mormon, you've missed the whole point. Part of the shaming is because you followed a false prophet. You think that being Mormon is in the name is in having a prophet who doesn't follow the tenets of Mormonism himself and thus teaches you not to follow the tenets of Mormonism. And thus the world knows Mormonism for shame. Bill Meyer came out, shame the Mormons. to the technology of Google search. I warned you earlier this year that I had received insider information and warned you in advance that Governor Cox was working in conspiracy, conspiracy with, thus conspiracy, to commit a crime with more than one person. The University of Utah CEO of mental health 
to cause the spread and escalation of coronavirus. Here we are. Delta! I informed the government. I didn't just do a video. I had insider information of a criminal plot to murder us. And it took the feds until this anti-vax for our kids at school for them to finally respond to me. And they may not even be responding to me because they don't want to be shamed. Oh, Travis let us know about this in advance? Uh, I don't know. I must have missed the email. Must have missed it. warned you about the criminal behavior of the church. Mormons are furious with me that I would dare expose them as criminals. Again, being Mormon is not in the name. You can't just do whatever you want because you're Mormon. You have to follow the tenets of Mormonism. You have to obey the Ten Commandments. Oh, but we're the Latter-day Saints. The Ten Commandments are done away with in Jesus. <laughs> Brigham Young blamed Joseph in section 132 saying that we can commit any crime we want except for murder and still be exalted. Oops. You're committing murder. How'd you miss that one? By not wearing masks, by not staying home, staying safe, you've committed murder. Being Mormon is not in the name. You've actually got to follow the tenets of Mormonism. And now you're guilty of murder. You have sunk to the lowest level of human nature. You're murderers. And you get angry at me. You run and hide from my videos. Oh, Travis exposed us. We better run and hide. Maybe he'll go away. That's exactly what you do when Mormons are spotlighted in the press. You run and hide. Oh, maybe they won't. Then maybe everybody will forget that we were the bad guys. We were the suckers and losers. You're taught this by your prophets. The whistleblower exposed the tithing, and then boom, coronavirus. Oh, did everybody forget? Yeah, until James Huntsman because YouTube silenced me. You weren't listening to me the whole time. I wouldn't let them get away with it. Being Mormon is not in the name. Everybody in the world is going through an exodus trigger event, except Utah who are laying down and dying. Lake Tahoe is the latest. Yeah, Lake Tahoe, not Louisiana. That's old school now. <laughs> Their exodus has come and gone. It's now Lake Tahoe is now in the news. I, I never saw it coming as a youth that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints would be the bad guys. Never saw that one coming. But I never let being Mormon get in the way of finding out the truth. Following the tenets of Mormonism.
should I even have to find and read the scripture for you about Joseph Smith prophesying of coronavirus? Why aren't you guys studying your scriptures to have found it yourself and doing the videos? You guys were all over Nelson when he came out in April conference last year. Last year, not this year. And said, oh, I said it was going to be memorable conference, but I didn't realize it was going to be this memorable. And all of you went, he predicted coronavirus. Remember that? Remember how I shamed you? Of course not. You were all busy mad at me and thinking the church is true because Nelson. It's going to be memorable because it was supposed to be the bicentennial of the first vision. And you turned it into a prophecy because you're so desperate for your prophets to be prophets. Because they're not. That exposed how desperate you are for a living prophet when you have none. Joseph Smith prophesied this. And I have to use a disclaimer for all my ex-Mormons and non-Mormons in the audience. Because <laughs> when I speak to Mormons, I have to speak differently than I speak to ex-Mormons and those not Mormon. So Mormons, turn down your volume for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Albert Pike, remember him? wrote the letter to Giuseppe Mazzini. said, hey, I'm a Scottish Rites Freemason, not York Rites, that the Smiths were. He's the same as Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball, Scottish Rites. He writes the letter to Giuseppe Mazzini, hey, we're the Illuminati, infiltrated the Scottish Rites. We're going to destroy the world, three world wars. The third one, we're going to destroy Christianity. We're going to show them that Jesus Christ, created by Constantine as supernatural, unreal, and thus Jesus says history is a fake. That's all Constantine. They know this. We're going to deceive Christianity and get them to deny so that we can then have them all join the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints under my brother Brigham, the doctrine of Lucifer. So yes, the Smiths knew all about this, because this plot was before Albert Pike. He was the one suggesting the outlined plan for implementing their attack of the latter days, that Third World War. And so who are the ones denying truth and science? Because of Jesus? Yeah, Christians. And so. How are they being destroyed? By being anti-science. And so what they'll do is after a mass slaughter of us, they'll then come out and say, hey, you guys denied science. You can't be trusted to govern yourselves. We're now going to take away your agency, force you into slavery. You're going to adhere to junk science, pseudoscience, as they're gonna call it real science and thus continue the deception like in 1984. The movie, TV, the book, <coughs> where there'll be people involved in science, but it's biased and purposely junked pseudo to keep people in slavery, keep people away from the truth of real science. So that's what's coming. Okay, Mormons, are you back now? You can turn up the volume. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> we have the feds investigating our governor because of the inability to protect our children. 
causing the spread and escalation. I warned you in advance. I warned you in advance from with the coronavirus that Moses, the word of God, warned us. Nobody's listening. And so here in section 45 of the Doctrine and Covenants, verse 31, and there shall be men standing in that generation that shall not pass until they shall see an overflowing scourge, for a desolating sickness shall cover the land. Joseph Smith knew this. Whether you're Mormon and believe in prophecy, or ex-Mormon and non-Mormon who understand what I just told you, that I had Mormons turn down the volume for my disciples he now is telling Mormons in the future what to have done to prepare he's not just going to warn you that danger is coming he's telling you now what you need to do to prepare but my disciples shall stand in holy places and shall not be moved stay home stay safe and he talks about a holy place holy places what is he referring to hold on let me finish with what the Mormons are doing instead but among the wicked men shall lift up their voices and curse God and die from the desolating sickness so what then is the holy places that Mormons should stay home and stay safe with. Again, you're not studying your scriptures. I shouldn't be the one doing this for you. <clears throat> Verse 66. And it shall be called the New Jerusalem. Oh, Zion. A land of peace, a city of refuge, a place of safety for the saints of the Most High God. Jesus, right? No. Son Amen. The Christ. From the understanding of the Jews. Remember? Jesus came to Joseph Smith in the first vision and said, Jesus is an abomination in Jesus' sight. And read it for yourselves. You think it's Jesus, don't you? What do you think he talks about when he talks about the creeds of Christianity? Constantine. That's the first one that started the chain reaction. Constantine's creed made Jesus a real person, though supernatural, not real, and placed him in history of the Roman period. All of those Gospels, not just the four, that have Jesus dying at the end, that's just like the story of Samson, the Sun King, the Most High Sun God, Sun Amun of the Egyptians, the Sun at Noonday, Remember Lehi talks about him? The sun at noonday came down and gave him a book saying America is going to be destroyed in the latter days of 2017 to 2024. Oh, you missed that part of my videos that I've been doing to for you all these years? Again, being Mormon is not in the name. You have to actually believe in it and do the work necessary to be Mormon. You know, Hinckley did the bees. You don't talk the talk, you don't walk the walk, you be the being. 
You're worthless to the world if all you're doing is talking the talk. I, I'm Mormon. The Church of Jesus Christ is the one true church on the face of the earth. Join us and pay your tithing. It's a protection racket. But the First Amendment protects us from all crime. Because we're Mormon. The true church. And we walk the walk to church every Sunday. And we go to the temple at least once a year, because going once a month, wow, that's pushing it. Giving those loyalty oaths <laughs> to the church prophets <laughs> is too much for us to handle. We've got our temple recommend, we're paying our tithing, what more do they want? So among the wicked, every man that will not take his sword against his neighbor must needs flee unto Zion for safety. Oops, where's Zion? It's not Utah. Utah isn't at peace. It's not a place of refuge, even though Afghans are coming here. Boy, are they being set up for disaster. In a place of safety. See, Mormons are all excited. Oh, yay, we're going to convert the Afghans to Mormonism. Otherwise, we'll torture them. It's not in the name. You've got to be Mormon. So, yeah, I... I've gone over all the scriptures for you. I'm already 22 minutes into this video. That's longer than I wanted, but knew it was coming. But let me read to you from the Associated Press's final statement. See, the Associated Press allows me to read their whole article, unlike the Salt Lake Tribune. Oops. Man. the final paragraph. <laughs> no, they haven't, Soren Simonson. He's living in delusional land. He does not understand that Nelson and the First Presidency came out with a wear a mask, get vaccinated statement only on their church news channel website. They didn't even do a video for it. They had to. Why? Yeah, well, I'm not getting 3,000 views on my website, because I don't have a website. The church bought it out and shut me down. And I'm not getting 3,000 views on each video. Church ordered YouTube to shut me down and silence me. But, the church is still concerned because I still have a voice even though it's just with a few of you <clears throat> and so yes that retraction that the first presidency gave that other week ago was not revelation from prophets of God I already went over with you if they had been true prophets of God they would have warned us about Section 45 way back in 2019. Nelson would have come out in October conference and said, I'm concerned. I'm getting revelation. There's a virus coming. From Section 45, verse 31, it's coming. We Mormons must be prepared with a year's supply of food to stay home and stay safe. Turns out that we need more than a year's supply, don't we? Yeah, we're going on two years now. But nope. They had to be told by YouTube to come out with some kind of retraction or they will have no choice but to honor my reporting of his videos 
that all kinds of magic will cure coronavirus rather than following the health professionals, of which Nelson is one, but chose to deny his own profession to have us stay home and stay safe until this passes over. You know, that Jewish thing, which is supposed to be an Israel thing, but only the Jews were obedient. Definitely not Christians. Moses, he's not the true Christ. Yeah, Christians deny the Christ. Because Moses is the Christ. That's who the Jews recognize as the Christ. Why don't Mormons recognize Moses as the Christ? Instead, Mormons want to be Christian. When the first vision, which we were supposed to have the bicentennial year last year, told us we're not supposed to be Christian because Jesus is an abomination as a real historical person and not a prophecy of the latter days. I didn't talk about I didn't go further into that. I sort of left you hanging on the Samson thing, didn't I? So I've got this on the screen, so I'll be able to remember it. So Samson, Sun King, Shemesh, Sun in Hebrew. The end at the end, that's Paleo-Hebrew. That's exclusive material you got from me. I'm the decipherer of Paleo-Hebrew. If that's upsetting to you because you think that I'm condescending to you, that I'm smarter than you because I did the work and you didn't, when? <clears throat> this is why I'm sharing with you my knowledge so that you can likewise be smart, but instead you're all whining and complaining. <sighs> I'm freely giving it to you. I'm not telling you to purchase my book on Amazon. Or I could even recommend going to academia.edu and downloading it for free. It's just the script. I haven't put up the vocabulary part. This is the vocabulary part. The N at the end of Hebrew words for names and places is a suffix determinative. Specifically, for people, it means king, because of the Egyptian character I deciphered. See, it's amazing. You make a decipherment, then it follows into the vocabulary as a test to confirm or deny. I confirmed. For places, kingdom. And there's more I've been teaching you, but 28 minutes now. So Sun King, Samson. So what happens with the story of Samson? Well, there's three deaths. And I've told you, deaths, when related to the sun, the right eye of Horus, you know, the two eyes of Horus is Peter for seer, refers to solar eclipses. Moon for lunar eclipses. Sun shall be darkened, moon turned to blood. So the first day of darkness, 21st of August, 2017, oh, that first year of the latter days that I just told you about previously, which was Monson's birthday, was also the new year for the ancient Egyptians who told us that on the first day of battle of the latter days when Horus is to return and take back the kingdom and restore it <clears throat> you thought it was Jesus Jews are waiting for Moses or a man like Moses Joseph Smith says it's a man like Moses and he's Mormon how did you Mormons miss that? And so, how did Samson play into this? Well, where was the eclipse in the sky? 
which constellation. You're not even studying your scriptures, are you? Leo, the lion. So, what was the first death in the stories of Samson? The young lion. A death, excuse me, with the sun king of a lion. 21st of August, 2017. Told in story form, rather than saying a sign in the heavens, I saw the heavens opened. Nope. You just have a story. Just like with Jesus dying on the cross. Which is the same as the third day of darkness for Samson. His death. He's tied to the pillars of the Philistine temple. And he knocks them down. Destroying the great and abominable church, Babylon the Whore, of the latter days. So for this, we go to Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 and 17. 8 April 2024. It crosses 21 August 2017. Southern Illinois, where Joseph Smith said we need to have the mountain cities of Zion and New Jerusalem built before 2017, before 2020's coronavirus, before, before. And so then you're saying, well, what was the second one, Travis? You really want me to go long and not be able to put this video up for you? His wife dies. And how does she die? Oh, she's unique and special. She's burned. What kind of solar eclipse has fire in the name? The Ring of Fire. Annular eclipses. 14 October 2023 in Virgo the woman the bride of Moses <laughs> the Messiah not Jesus and so yes the 8 April 2024 on the back of Pegasus which is Pisces the two fish Oh, Jesus had something about two fish, didn't he? Uh-huh. Now, yeah, total solar eclipse. Angel standing in the sun. And Jupiter, the Messiah character of the heavens, is in Aries, the death sign. So, Jupiter dies, solar eclipse, the death of Jesus on the cross or the death of Samson giving us a date not an actual history event and everybody misses it John didn't the Book of Mormon told us to refer to John didn't he now you're already freaking out Mormons are already upset and left and I forgot to have them turn down the volume for this yeah Book of Mormon's not a real history, isn't it? It's code. Yes, Lehi gives us the date for the latter days, 2017 to 2024, right there in the first chapter of the book that somebody had to rewrite because Junior lost 116 pages. That one actually is getting views. It's just conflicted views. Confic con that's a had conflicted likes. TWG, people don't like it. Travis Wayne Goodsell, people like it. Weird how I have different audiences on different channels. So, now, back to the Associated Press. <coughs> Soren. Here's Mormons say, this is a hoax. Really, Mormons? 
You still think this is a hoax? Where did you get that idea from again? Oh, Zedekiah in the first year of the reign of his reign, who we are warned about, put on the throne by Babylon. That hoax guy who also told you to inject yourself with bleach? I mean, you could have looked online and found his face next to two books by Ingersoll in 1900. And you could have realized that Albert Pike and his band of merry Scottish Rites Illuminati had chosen the person in advance. That's kind of weird and psycho freaky. But nonetheless, Mormons are also saying it doesn't matter. I'm Mormon. Therefore, I'm automatically going to the Celestial Kingdom whether I murder people or not. It's not affecting us. Really? Have you tried to get a bed in the ICU at the Intermountain Medical Health Center? The hospital? Yeah, I can't. No room in the inn for baby Jesus. And millions of people have died. How can you deny? How? And so, for Soren, he's heartbroken because he's blaming Mormons and not the Prophet who keeps throwing out magic. All oh, the healing power of Jesus! Look! A painter has him walking on water! <laughs> it's a real history! Just like the Book of Mormon! Jesus is performing miracles! He can cure coronavirus! Do you not understand what Albert Pike was talking about? He's going to destroy Christianity. And they're doing it. As they keep pushing Jesus cures. Oh, we're going to hold a fast. Oh, we're going to hold another one. This time it's going to be more powerful because it's going to be on Good Friday of the Catholics. Yeah, the Christian holiday of the real Jesus. Good Friday. That'll cure coronavirus. Still had to come out with Jesus can heal and came out with an even more abominable one for which YouTube had to go to the church and say, hey, you need to print some kind of retraction because Travis has a good point. We've got to pull your channels, not just your videos. We've got to be equal, and so please help us help you. The healing power of gratitude. <sighs> now you know the rest of the story. concerned about not being seen as the jokes of the world. Oops! All you had to do was be Mormon. Not say you're Mormon. Not go to church and claim you're Mormon when you should have been staying home and staying safe. The whole world now knows the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints isn't true. That's how they perceive you now. They perceive Mormons as psychos, as crazy people, as stupid people, who are deniers of truth and science. That's how the world perceives you. And I've been trying to warn you, begging you, don't let them see that in you. 
I already see it in you. Please stop. And you complain. You put thumbs down. You get angry. You want me dead. You want me silenced. So everybody but Utah is having an exodus because Utah are lifting up their voices, cursing God and dying. Denying that it was because their prophet led them astray, that betrayed them, that abandoned them. I can keep on going, but dear God, I'm never going to finish this video. Section 101, Joseph Smith gives a parable prophecy. And in verse, let's see, where is it, the enemy, there it is, 51. The enemy came by night, broke down the hedge, and the servants, prophets, of the nobleman, Jesus, arose and were affrighted and fled. Do you see that? The prophets are going to be scared and flee. And the enemy destroyed their works and broke down the olive trees. So all the buildings destroyed, Mormons, dead. Who would have thought that the enemy was the prophets? I guess they realized, hey, we're not going to flee. We'll prove Joseph Smith a false prophet. We'll be the enemy. <laughs> oh, dear God. You were warned by Moses himself. Joseph Smith chose to listen to Acts version rather than <laughs> Moses' version. God, I can keep on going. I've been doing these videos over and over and over again and you just won't listen. You would rather die than listen to me. Deuteronomy 18.15 And David Gaunt insisted this was Jesus. And so you see in the, the footnotes for 15B, TG, not Travis Goodsell, <laughs> Jesus Christ prophecies about. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet. Joseph Smith says he's Mormon. Section 103, 16. From the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, a man like Moses, 103.16. Unto him ye shall hearken. Oops. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the days of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them, and I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which, shall, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. And then it talks about the death of Nelson. Which I'm still waiting for. So let's go to Acts. The version that Joseph Smith chose to use in the first vision account, which is actually the part where Nephi comes to him, not Moroni. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel the Lamanite and those that follow after because he too, the sign of his birth, the sign of his death, 2017, 2024, have likewise foretold of 
these days. Ye are the children of the prophets. You're going to burn in hell. So why is it son Ammon? Because Isaiah told us so. He says his name shall be called Emmanuel. God, El, you know, Superman from the house of El. See, they know. They put it in the story form as a comic book character. But Emmanuel, Iman, Amun, the sun god at noonday of the Egyptians. And so Matthew, see, I, I can I keep on going forever. Everything, as Jacob 7 tells us, everybody talks about this guy of the latter days. And you're all focused on Jesus coming back. As Rapture Palooza already murdered him, that was hilarious. Because John in Revelation says it's a sign in the heavens, not a real situation, not a real Jesus, not a real Pegasus. But Christians have believed he's flying from outer space to save us. Mormons take out the horse, because, well, that's not scientific. <laughs> Jesus instead uses pillars of light to come from outer space. That's scientific. Star Trek tells us so. <laughs> and so in Rapture Palooza, they murder Jesus. Anna Kendrick's boyfriend shoots him out of the sky. Murders him. And then God comes down and says, You killed my son! <laughs> and then he dies by electrocution in the water. <laughs> with the devil. <laughs> Just hilarious. And so, yes, it's the perfect mockery because Christians aren't reading either. It's a sign in the heavens, not a real event. And so for the movie to murder the real event, which is fake, it's supposed to be a sign in the heavens, Hilarious, and I had to explain it to you so it's not hilarious to you. <laughs> and so, here you have it. <sighs> Gotta go back further. Oh, no, there it is. Because an angel appears, Gabriel, you know, Magna. I did that. Again, I can keep on going. We were warned. The angel Gabriel came and warned Mormons with the earthquake the day after my birthday and said, hey guys, I'm knocking the horn out of Moroni for you to pay attention. Nope. Didn't want to listen. So the angel Gabriel tells Joseph, you're going to call your this other woman's baby who you did not have sex with but paid for thinking she was a virgin jokes on you well you're gonna name that child Jesus because it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet what prophet why isn't Isaiah in here Matthew saying behold a virgin shall be with child Now you know why it's an immaculate conception. It's a sign from outer space, not a real event. She'll bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. So they call his name Jesus. You're going to call his name Jesus because the prophet said you're supposed to call his name Emmanuel. And then he gives the wrong interpretation. You need to cancel that. The redactor is wrong. It's not God with us. It's the sun god. Then Joseph, being raised from a sleep, did as the angel, uh, or the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not. You can't impregnate her twice. 
you don't have to worry. Women can still have sex during pregnancy. <laughs> Her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus instead of Emmanuel. God. <laughs> and now we're at 50 minutes, dear God. So you may never get this. We may all be dead. So you will never get this. This will be the sealed portion of my video. It's, you know, Mormons. I was born and raised Mormon. And I can't explain in short terms how Joseph Smith is the good guy. Because Brigham Young set him up and framed him. And so ex-Mormons and non-Mormons, they're all... Yeah, Joseph Smith is the bad guy because Brigham Young said so. Brigham Young was the good guy who saved the Mormons and put them back into reality and committed all sorts of crimes for which the United States shut down the church. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> Nobody's making the connection! <sighs> and so CNN screws it all up. Fast facts! Junk Facts by CNN, the real source for fake news and anti-science, anti-history, anti-truth. We're just the joke of the world. Because you will not listen. You'd rather die. Yeah, I think I'm done. I better shut the video off before I think of something else to add.